One in 88. That's how many children develop a disorder on the autism spectrum. Alex Thaxton is one in 88. When my son first got his diagnosis, it was more of a, okay, fine, there's a problem here, let's find out what the solution is, let's go to the clinics, let's get it treated and move on. Um, obviously that's not the case with autism. It is a lifetime disability. Um, there are a lot of kids out there impacted with autism and a lot of those kids are growing into adults. So as those needs change, it does get a little frustrating sometimes, um, but we're trying to keep the faith and, and move forward with that. In the spirit of moving forward, Chuck Thaxton put two and two together. I'm constantly looking at what the latest research is, what we can do for new treatments. Um, I've also been involved with Teradata off and on since the late 1980s. And knowing the technology that Teradata has and the needs and potential for finding uh, cures and treatments for autism, when the opportunity of partners came up to just put those together, it just seemed like a very natural fit. Enter the Autism Genetic Resource Exchange, an ambitious project initiated and sponsored by Autism Speaks, where 10,000 people on the autism spectrum donate their DNA and medical information to research in the search for a cause, treatment, or cure. Genetics is about numbers, and without the computing infrastructure, we uh, really, we're, we're not going to be able to accelerate the field. It's going to be really working together. And we know that uh, autism is, is not purely about genetics, that uh, the scientific community is very much aligned with the notion that there's a combination of genetic and environmental factors that are really contributing to autism. But doing all that number crunching and, and, and really thinking through um, the trends in the data is going to require a lot more help. Enter data philanthropy. One way to think about data philanthropy would be to think about it as yet another industry where Teradata has specific solutions in vertical industries, some that apply to retail, some that apply to financial, some that apply to telco, and, and on and on and on. The underlying technology for all of those vertical solutions is exactly the same. And a lot of the algorithms and a lot of the science around how we get to the benefit from data in those different vertical industries is very similar. And so you can almost think about data philanthropy as a new industry where we're looking at social problems and we're applying that same know-how to a new data set and looking for better understanding in that space. The size of data we're talking about here is for genetics and genomics unprecedented. It's petabyte scale. Maybe not so scary for Teradata, but uh, scary for our research scientists. It's a, it's a seriously large undertaking to, to commit to store and analyze that size of data. And so when there's an opportunity to collaborate with a group that knows how to manage something of that size, it's, it's, it's an opportunity we're not going to we're not going to take a serious look at because we need help. We need to be able to have rapid analytics. I think it's fantastic. Um, using all the data that's out there to actually do good, if you will, is, is an incredible opportunity for uh, making the world a better place, quite frankly. And with the resources, the technology, and the brains that Teradata has, it's a great place for it to be happening. Every day that we wake up and there isn't a solution for our families is, is a day that that, that we really not have failed, but we just need, it's, it's, we have to realign and, and work harder because it's about hope. Um, this is what we're sitting here in the Teradata Labs and hoping that we can find some solutions so that we can bring these two families and impact families much more quickly. We don't have, we don't have 10 years. And what we know is one in 88 can't wait. Teradata and Autism Speaks, doing good, with data.